Well, we are following some breaking news right here at 5 o'clock. Police in New Hampshire say several people are hurt after a shooting at the New Hampshire State Hospital in Concord. You're looking at pictures from the scene that have just come in in the last few minutes. Police are urging the public to stay away, saying it is an active investigation. Lots of law enforcement there working the scene at the hospital. We do know the governor in New Hampshire just confirmed that the shooter in this case is dead. We will continue to monitor this breaking news, bringing you more information as we get it. Again, a shooting at a hospital in New Hampshire. We do know the suspect here, alleged shooter, is dead. A lot more from ABC News at 630 on that. Also a late developing story. The national votes are coming in and right now it appears that the United Auto Workers Union employees who work for Ford across the country are on their way to ratifying their new four and a half year deal. The UAW vote tracker shows that at Ford more than 68% of the votes cast support the agreement. That also matches an analysis done by the Detroit News. As you know, the Louisville Ford workers voted against this deal, but in the end, they too will uh, benefit from it. A 27% general wage increase, among other improved benefits. Well, after two weeks of witness and expert testimony, days of deliberations, the federal civil rights case against, against Brett Hankinson ended in a mistrial. Now the big question, what comes next and when? WHS 11's Alexis Jones has more today. The disappointment from Thursday's mistrial is felt outside the courthouse and through the walls of Roots 101. It's a sad day in America. Lamont Collins founded the museum three years ago. Since Breonna Taylor's death, Collins has followed Brett Hankison's case. Though he's hurt by the federal trial's outcome, he says is nothing new from what history has shown. After four days of deliberations, the jury said they couldn't honestly and reasonably reach a verdict. They were stuck on both of the civil rights violations facing Hankison. Despite a mistrial not being the same as an acquittal, Collins says it's simply not enough. However, trial attorney Ken Wicker says a mistrial isn't as bad as it seems. It's a do-over for both sides. When asked if federal prosecutors will retry the case, a DOJ spokesperson told ABC News the Department of Justice is actively considering all of our available options. A hearing is set for December 13th to determine what actions the federal government will take. Wicker says a retry won't be easy on either side, mainly because proceedings will play out similarly to the first. But Collins is unsure the outcome will be different. In Louisville, Alexis Jones, WHAS 11 on your side. Along with Hankison, three other former LMPD officers were federally charged. Kyle Meany, Kelly Goodlett, and Joshua James are charged in a separate case involving the Breonna Taylor case. Those three are accused of drawing up the search warrant which led to the raid on Breonna Taylor's apartment in March of 2020. But the Department of Justice found that that warrant was also written using false information. The department alleges James used information he knew wasn't true when writing the warrant. Meany is accused of knowing it had false information and approving it anyway. And Goodlett is accused of helping cover it up. Goodlett pleaded guilty and is expected to testify in the case against James and Meany and their federal trial will begin next year. Days of searching led to a grim discovery in a small Kentucky town. The Whitley County Sheriff says the body of a four-year-old girl was recovered last night. This is coming from southern Kentucky near Williamsburg, right near the Tennessee line. Four-year-old Chloe Darnell was reported missing earlier this week. Her family says they had not seen her since September. Investigators say 24-year-old Brittany Slaughter had custody of the girl, and authorities could not find either of them. Within 24 hours, they found Slaughter unharmed and then found the little girl's body. Slaughter and 34-year-old Adam Hayes were arrested and charged with her murder. The four-year-old's body was sent to the state medical examiner's office for an autopsy. The sheriff's office says more charges in this case could be on the way. Nearly seven years after a fire killed three people in Louisville, the woman who said it was finally sentenced today. Denisha Peden admitted to setting the fire in a six-unit apartment building in December of 2017. According to court documents, the fire quickly spread, engulfing the building. This forced residents to jump out windows to escape, but three people did not make it. Archimeda Riley and her 16-year-old and 11-year-old daughters died. Today, in court in Louisville, Peden pleaded guilty to murder, arson, and wanton endangerment. She's expected to serve 46 years in prison. The judge still has to accept her sentence. That'll happen in January. 
A new Albany woman is dead after an incident at her home yesterday. Police aren't revealing many details here, only confirming 64-year-old Erlene Deloney was found unconscious outside her house and later died at UofL Hospital. It happened on Conservative Street in New Albany, just south of East Spring Street. Police later arrested and charged 20-year-old Donta Reagan Sanders, who also lived on the property. Police have not released his charges. Heads up uh, once again about the Sherman Minton Bridge, which of course connects Louisville to New Albany. Starting tonight at 10, all westbound lanes of the bridge are going to close heading into southern Indiana. Again, westbound lanes. It'll stay closed until 6 a.m. Monday. This closure will allow crews to work safely as the bridge renewal project continues and then shifts to phase number four. Right here at 5 o'clock, Louisville's mayor outlines a plan to kickstart universal pre-K for every 3- and 4-year-old in the city. Craig Greenberg also gave a price tag to state lawmakers, and he says he needs more money from the Metro Council. Senior reporter Isaiah Kim Martinez and photojournalist Jessica Farley are breaking down the numbers. Well, Mayor Craig Greenberg is doubling down on a campaign promise, working to bring early education opportunities before kindergarten to every child here in Louisville. That's specifically for every three and four year old in the Derby City. What's your why? Why do you do this? Um, I love children. Felicia Alfred leads the effort to take care of and teach nearly 100 kids up to five years old. We provide a safe space for children. Um, we provide meals. She's the executive director of the St. Benedict Center. I understand that these children are going to be the people that are going to take care of us when we get older. Um, and I don't know about you, but I want them to be able to do that well. $40 million over the course of two years is what Greenberg is asking Kentucky lawmakers for. That's in order to kickstart a universal pre-K model he hopes would eventually expand statewide. This is an ambitious goal that we have. It's not going to happen overnight. The deficit of accessible child care and early education across this city, particularly in areas of West Louisville, is well documented. Louisville's mayor has pledged to make the system more equitable since his run on the campaign trail. Metro Council President Marcus Winkler tells me this latest pitch may have a shot in the years to come. So there's a possibility? Certainly. Greenberg plans to propose additional funding in the next city budget to establish the program. Winkler supports the effort, but says the question of whether significant funding is feasible will depend. If current trends continue uh, and we have the type of growth that we've had, um, then I think there there could very likely be room for this type of initiative or something similar. Meanwhile, as far as concerns from existing child care centers of being overrun, what would you have to ensure those folks that it will be a collaborative effort? It has to be. They are going to be a part of the solution. We need more early learning locations for children across the city. Greenberg promising partners are welcome and needed. It's great that they want to put that $20 million, but make sure they ask us what we need and what we want and what we want it to look like. Alfred saying her doors are open. Isaiah Kim Martinez, WHAS 11 on your side. And Greenberg tells us that the money wouldn't just be for infrastructure, but also to attract, hire and train more child care workers. Many centers across the country are experiencing a shortage of staff. Well, the holidays can be a challenging time, especially for seniors and those who are in need. Louisville's Gen Care Senior Medical Center on West Broadway is giving back in the most delicious way. Today, the staff hosted a Thanksgiving grocery giveaway for residents who live in Dosker Manor. We need members of the community to come out and volunteer. And we also know that there are needs uh, in our public housing, including Doster Manor. And this is, this is a small step, but it uh, reflects our commitment to improve the quality of life at uh, all of our public housing properties, especially Doster Manor. Residents were supplied with green beans, fresh eggs, roasted chickens, potatoes, cake mix, and personal care items. This event was open to the first 150 residents of Dosker Manor, and local volunteers from the mayor's office and Louisville Metro Housing were also there to help. Also today, kids at a local elementary school will be heading home with book bags full of food. Blessings in a Backpack Louisville chapter gave out a weekend's worth of meals to kids in the program. It happened at Englehart Elementary ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday. School administrators say many students begin to feel anxious and display behavior issues. When they become unsure of where their next meal will come from, oftentimes this is right around school breaks. So that's why Blessings in a Backpack stepped in to help. 
and they showed up with backpacks today, which is a bonus because some of our students don't have access to a backpack or they've left a backpack at a sitter's home. And so having that access to just the backpack alone is going to be a game changer for them this week. Englehart Elementary has the district's highest population of homeless children. So as you can imagine, this is a very welcomed and important program.